of 78 Denver, take one. Speed. Marker. To make sure, no confusion, this is no pre-announcement, this is the real shipping item right now. We've already shifted 200 units in the last few weeks and uh, slowly catching up with the back orders. As always, we make uh, a seamless transition. That means if you order Lockheed right now, this is what you get. Um, so, I mean, if you look at it, despite of what we all crammed into that small little box, we really maintained the small footprint, which makes this actually the smallest time code and sync device uh, out there on the market. Um, on the other side, it is really the same box as any locket before, so everybody used the locket before feels at home right away. Um, and let me tell you, even that have not used the locket before. So um, let me show you what stayed the same is the box, of course. We have the two pen light cells that keeps you through a very long working day, even if. So its uh, battery power is longer and better than with the uh, predecessor. Um, we have a USB port for customer firmware update, so it doesn't come back to need to come back to factory once we release a new firmware with new features, and we will make extensive use of that. Um, the other thing is the infrared port, so you can uh, jam sync it wirelessly um, with the um, with ACC the control. 501 controller. And we have the bicolor sync indicator that we have moved from the side panel on the front, so an immediate look at the side of a camera will show you whether the unit is in sync or not. So, what's new? It's blue. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but beside that new shiny hood, we have actually revamped the whole electronics. So, we moved away from dedicated chips we've been using over the last two decades of uh, locket boxes and moved over to a freely programmable uh, FPGA uh, architecture, which allows us to implement new sync formats and whatever as they come. I mean, technically, Technology really advances so quickly, and we don't know what's around the corner in a couple of months or next year. So we really made an open platform that we can stay with the hardware for a while, which makes it a future-proof investment if you now decide to go for, with a locket. Uh, we already implemented um, odd frame legs like the 1080p double rates with 50 or 60 frames. Um, we have pulse per frame, multi-pulse per frame on a list that's going to come. And also with that, uh, since we're creating every signal as we need to know by now, we can also implement a timecode offset to compensate for the picture processing delay on digital cameras. Um, the good thing is you can go both directions, about I think 10 frames it is, so it has yeah. plus minus 10 frames, so you can compensate either on the audio end or on the video end, just in case that the camera operator doesn't want to have that. So then we changed the interface. The former lockets had two BNC sockets, one for sync, one for timecode, and a limo for timecode. We done away with the BNC for timecode and implemented a second limo port. It's simply because five pins are better than two. Um, so we have two timecode, separate timecode outputs, but we also have two separate timecode inputs, and even more. Um, two separate timecode inputs means if you have hooked up a camera to that with a sync and a timecode, you can without disconnecting anything, rejam the locket over the second limo port. The other thing you apparently can do is you can feed two cameras, which is 3D rigs. Talking about 3D rigs, we have added a power mode to the BNC outlet. So you can switch between single sync mode and dual sync mode. So it's beefy enough to drive two cameras in parallel. All you need is a T-tap and four cables, and you're ready to fire up a whole 3D rig. Um, we had space because we moved away with the LEDs, so we, s we thought uh, we could use an ominous black handle, something like that. Actually, it's a black cap at the moment, more on that later on. Um, one thing we are absolutely excited about is that we've done away, there are no more screwdrivers, no more dip switches. We have a three-function navigation wheel. We are so proud of it, we call it the ACL three-function wheel. Uh, no kidding. Um, Actually, so you have, what that enables us to do is we have really two less one finger operations. So you, and the good thing is you can do everything on the fly. So no need to power down the locket, look into the manual. You just adjust the unit as it's running. 
This is dangerous. So because you don't want to do this while the unit is in operation or while recording because it will interrupt the sync and the time code output and mess up uh, uh, the metadata or the sync so you end up probably with a garbled file. So make that while the camera is in pause. Um, the other thing is we also try to keep it as simple as possible. So we thought out and it's, it's a little bit hard if you do a conception of a menu and you end up with the real thing. Uh, you find out you've not done everything right, and we're pretty much, we actually, we're really proud that we really made it happen. It's a very low-level, shallow menu navigation system, so actually you always see where you're at and what you want to do. Pretty, pretty cool. I'll show you later on. The other thing is we made it, we tried to make it foolproof, so we prevented to set the locket at, or run the locket at settings that, that are not workable. So if you mean if you have a NTSC frame rate on the timecode and the PAL uh, video sync, that wouldn't match because the second has a different length definition. Um, so there's a mismatch prevention. You cannot do anything wrong with the unit, basically. It just doesn't let you do that. And to make that happen, we have implemented a display. So everything you do is display guided. You see what you do. It's really, it's WYSIWYG. We implemented a really bright, high contrast, daylight, even sunlight readable older LED display. That's, uh, I think that's also a first time I've for a portable sync generator. And it has a very comprehensive information on it. So basically you see everything you need to know. So let's move over to the home screen. On the home screen, you see, of course, you see the time code that the unit is running on. You see the, the video sync settings you have uh, chosen, and you see the frame rate of the time code. Um, right here, what we see is we see a little X before the time code frames, uh, which means I have picked a, it's PAL, sorry. Um, we have picked the 50 frames per second video format and, and jammed that uh, with a 24 time code. That works because it's integer values. Um, here, that is the display if uh, we would have set us an offset. We don't have that done. So you see everything is on the screen. You also have a battery readout. So before the, the, the sync indicator even starts double blinking, you know exactly how long, or you've got a pretty good imagine of how long the battery is going to last. If you fire up the unit after lunch break, you see, okay, it's, prank, it's drained pretty much, so rather swap the batteries if it's still over 50%, over no need to worry. So if you press the nice ACL3 function wheel, you enter in, in the menu bar. So the menu bar has several points. I'm stick to uh, an example choosing the sync just to show how we thought it out. So selecting the sync type is, uh, the sync is selecting the type, video, audio, or you can defeat it to save power. We have the format, and we, then we have the frame rate. It's one after another, and it's interactive. So it only shows corresponding values. For instance, if you pick plain NTSC, it only lets you pick between 2997 and 30, because there is no more. If you go 1080p, you got the whole enchilada. So picking up a, a sync rate or a sync format actually is also done on the screen that display that maintains the setting the locket is running on. So here you see the present settings, then you see what you're going to choose. If you choose that, it will ask you to confirm. So there's no way to do something wrong on the shoot and mess everything up. So before you do anything, it sticks with the old, so you deliberately got to move over to pick the new settings and apply that. So the, on, the other thing you see here, and it, what comes up in the next screen is we're now running at the PAL settings, and we picked NTC settings. So what happens then? It was running before on PAL setting with some time code frame rate, um, integer values, and now moving on to, to NTC frame rate. That doesn't work out. So it automatically says you, I've got a sync and time code mismatch, and you've got to adjust. It won't let you out of there. So if you adjust, it's highlighted, so you press the button, it automatically takes you to the timecode menu. So you there you have the chance to pick a proper timecode frame rate. If you don't do that and stick with the a, with a integer frame rate, it automatically takes you back to the sync setting. There is no way out of that loop. You cannot make that happen. So you're pretty sure 
you always end up with a really working proper setup. The only thing you've got to be, be a little bit careful about is that cross rates are allowed. So we deliberately done that. You can have 25 time code on uh, uh, 50 or 25 video, and you can have 2398 on uh, 2997 video. So you see, we try to keep it very simple and easy to operate. Still, we really do think that is the most advanced piece of timecode gear we've done ever be than ever before. So, and we made it really that it not only stands up to the requirements in the field, but also to the rightful high expectation that you probably have in a product made by ambient recording. So that's about lock it. There's one more thing. You've seen the black handle, and it really doesn't look like a black handle. It rather looks like an antenna. That's because it is. Um, it's part of something we have up our sleeves. We're coming out with that later. We keep a little mum about it because it's a very complicated, it's a very sophisticated plan we have in mind, but we really do believe that this is really the next big thing, and it's going to be the ACN, the Ambient Clocket Network. So what we have noticed watching how production goes over the past, we've, uh, with multi-camera shootings, 3D rigs, this and that, um, we noticed that timecode and sync, as important as they are to get everything together, while lining up is not yet enough. And what you need is metadata these days. So what we're going to introduce is a web server-based based mesh network. The, um, the locket is fully prepared for that. It has all the wireless functionality in there. It's just the software is not unlocked because we need to finish the server first. So what this will allow you in the future is uh, complete free configuration, syncing, and monitoring of the clocket devices over wireless. So as I said, it's a proprietary network. It's not Wi-Fi. It's something Zigbee-ish we're using. It, uh, also, the locket can interface via GPI or serial. That's on the second lemo um, to the unit it is hooked up to. So we can read out transport tally information, and we also can read out metadata over serial. So right now, at the moment, we can read out two devices uh, for testing. One is the sound devices, uh, seven series recorders over the ceiling protocol, so we talk that. And the other one is the cross um Aladdin, Aladdin uh, lens control system. So we can read out focus and iris. Um, so what we're looking at is at a generally stored metadata scene take note spanning EDL that brings together all the offline information together with the online metadata. So the offline metadata is stored, embedded in the files, and the offline metadata is something that don't end up in the files, such as lens control, 3D rig information, this and that, parallax, you know, all that stuff. So DIT would know. Um, to access this, all you need to have is some Wi-Fi equipped unit. It's a web server, so you log in on the web page, and you can make use of the EDL, download it. It's going to be probably in the beginning, it's a CSV file or something like that. Um, to not confuse anybody and not to make things dangerous, there will be dedicated user profiles so that not everybody is able to rejam the lockets while on the fly. So basically, that is what we have in mind. And I mean, words, it's hard really to describe with words. So before I, we say goodbye, um, we have a small video that shows the idea we have in mind. Thank you. Evolution of time. Imagine a set in which all digital devices communicate all media data at one central point. Imagine slates displaying STN, scene and take. Lenses revealing focal width and aperture. 3D rigs parallax, convergence and accommodation. Ambient clocket network. The next step in digital content production workflow. To be continued. <laughs> to be continued. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much uh, for hosting us.